Good day everyone. Now for today's lecture, we will uh, discuss about different problems involving Cartesian vector. Now, generally, the goal of solving Cartesian vector is to find the Cartesian vector itself. But to find this Cartesian vector, there are different approach based on their given. So, it's either the alpha, beta, or gamma are given to find the Cartesian vector, or it's either the transverse angle theta and the azimuth angle phi. So, in this type of problem, we can solve Cartesian vectors if there are angles involved. It's either the directional angles or the transverse angle and the azimuth angle. Now, in the second type of problem, we will discuss this in another unit in which the position of the vector is given. Okay, not the angles but its position. So, here we have here a point 1 in which it is a, this point 1 is identified as its position based on x, uh, x axis, y axis, and z axis. So, for this point 1, which is the origin of the vector, so I call it as x1, y1, and z1. While the end of the vector, I call this as position 2, in which it has a given position based on x axis, y axis, and z axis. So, I call it as x2, y2, and z2. So, as I said, we will deal this problem in the next unit. So, let's focus first on problems involving angles. Example of problem that involves alpha, beta, and gamma is this one. Okay? So, here, as you can see, alpha is unknown, the magnitude is given, beta is given, and the gamma is given. So, we will solve first for alpha here to find the Cartesian vector of f. Well, for this, so transverse angle is given and the azimuth angle, and we will use that to find the Cartesian vector of F, so in this problem. While there is another one, so for example here, the slope of this is given, so we will use this to find the azimuth angle, or it's either way around, the slope of this, the sides of the right triangles are given, and we will find the transverse angle. So, this is an example of that. So, here, the azimuth angle, which is 45, here is given, but the angle, transverse angle, is not given. So, we will solve it using this sides of a right triangle, which is 3, 4, and 5. And if we find the angle of that, using its sides, we can now find the transverse angle. So, these are the types of problems involving angles in finding Cartesian vector. So, let's focus first on the values of directional angles and its Cartesian vector. Okay? So, here, I have here a vector that is positioned in positive x, positive y, and positive z. So, it means if the vector is in positive x, I expect its alpha is between 0 degrees to 90 degrees. If the vector is positioned in positive y, I also expect that beta is uh, it's between 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And same with gamma. If the vector can be found in positive z, the angle gamma is within, within the range of 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And if we will use the angles alpha, beta, and gamma to find the Cartesian vector, the components of AX, AY, and AZ with their respective direction are all positive. Now, for this second given, as you can see, my vector A is in the position of positive X, negative Y, and positive Z. So, I expect since my vector is in positive X and positive Z, both of their angles should be in the range of 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And since my beta is in negative y, the range of my beta should be higher than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. Because the rule in directional angles, these are measured from their positive axis. So that is the angle from positive y going to our vector. And if we will solve the Cartesian vector, definitely we should expect that the component of our vector in y direction or in j direction should be negative. So, in this third problem, we can see that our vector is in the position of negative x, 
positive y and positive z. So again, the positive angles of beta and gamma within the range of 0 degrees to 90 degrees but value of our alpha should be higher than 90 degrees to the range of 180 degrees because our vector is found on negative x and our angle will be measured from positive x to the position of the vector. And we expect the component of the Cartesian vector on ax, on x direction, is negative. And lastly, here, the vector is in the position of positive x, positive y but negative z so we expect alpha beta is within the range of 0 degrees to 90 degrees but the gamma should be higher than 90 degrees going to 180 degrees but not higher than 180 degrees and in this type of problem the component of the Cartesian vector in z direction is negative so, I hope this is clear because we will use these ideas in solving Cartesian vector. In my next video, we will start solving Cartesian vector using the alpha, beta, and gamma. The next one is solving Cartesian vector using transverse angles and uh, azimuth angle. The third one, we will solve the problems using slopes or the sides of the triangle. And for the next unit, we will, have, we will discuss position vector. We will now solve an example of Cartesian vector. So, in this problem, if a force has a magnitude of 1,200 newton and angle of alpha is 60 degrees and an angle of beta is 45 degrees, express the force in Cartesian vector form and determine its unit vectors. So, let's try to draw this first. So, this is our vector F, and we have here the Z, the X, positive X, and positive Y. So, there are given angles. So, here, remember, the alpha, beta, and gamma are angles coming from their positive axis. Okay, so this one is alpha. So, that is alpha. It says the alpha is 60 degrees. So, that is alpha. Our beta is this one. So, our beta here is 45 degrees. And there is no given gamma. But we assume this is gamma. So, gamma is unknown. But definitely, since uh, our vector is in the negative direction of z so that is the negative direction of z so we can say that gamma should be higher than 90 degrees in this okay in this problem so let's try to solve this so there is a given magnitude so that it will be the magnitude of our vector is equal to 1200 newton and we are asked to determine the Cartesian vector and determine the unit vector. So, so if we will focus first on determining the Cartesian vector, so determine. And to determine the Cartesian vector, we have to note that force is equal to the magnitude of a vector times the unit vector u. Okay? So, it means... In determining the Cartesian vector, we have to determine first what is the unit vector u. And from my discussion before, we have two formula for getting the unit vector. Okay, it's either u is equal to f, what is the Cartesian vector, divided by its magnitude, in which that is fx. So, since we, don't, we do not have a Cartesian vector, so we cannot use this one, this first formula. But we can also use the second formula for getting the unit vector in which that is cosine alpha i hat plus cosine beta j hat plus cosine 
gamma, k hat. And alpha, beta are given. So our problem would be getting the uh, gamma. I also noted that from our previous discussion that we have the identity that is cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma is equal to 1. Okay? So, since alpha and beta are given, so let's write it here. Alpha is 60 degrees and beta is 45 degrees. We will use this to solve gamma. And here, if we will derive this one, so that will be cosine squared gamma is equal to 1 minus cosine squared alpha minus cosine squared beta. And to remove the squared, so that will be cosine gamma is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine squared alpha minus cosine squared beta. And to remove the cosine, it will be now gamma is equal to r cosine square root of 1 minus cosine squared alpha minus cosine squared beta. And if we will substitute, so that will be r cosine. So if you will put this in your calculator, it will be 1 minus, you will write cosine 60, then square it, minus cosine 45, then squared it, and the gamma. So the answer is 60 degrees. Okay? So again, uh, since we know that since we know that gamma should be higher than 90 degrees, okay, because so the disadvantage of using R cosine in getting alpha, beta, or gamma, so it will not give us an angle higher than 90 degrees. And usually, this angle is the angle that will complete the 180 degrees. So it means if the answer is in here is 60 degrees, the angle from our problem would be 180 minus 60, that is 120 degrees so how to check so since this is negative k okay so if i will go back here to solve the unit vector if i will solve cosine 60 the answer would be positive which is incorrect because our vector f is in negative z so i need to use cosine 120 k hat and the answer of that is negative 0 0.5 k hat which is negative and which is correct because it's pointing along negative z. While for the others, so this one, so our i hat should be positive, our j hat should be positive because the vector is lying on positive x, positive y, and negative z. Okay, so here, I will now substitute. So cosine 60 degrees i hat plus cosine 45 degrees j hat and cosine 60 the answer is positive 0.5 so 0.5 i hat cosine 45 okay so that is square root of 2 over 2 or 0 0.71 plus 0 0.71 j hat so the final answer for unit vector is 0.5 i hat, 0.71 j hat minus 0.5 k hat. And that is now our unit vector. We can now solve our force. So our force now, F is equal to the magnitude times its unit vector. So it will be, the magnitude is 1,200 newton times 0.5 i hat plus 0.71 j hat minus 0 0.5 k hat and if we will distribute and to get the value it will be 1200 times 0 0.5 that is 600 i hat 1200 times 0 0.71 so that is positive 852 j hat 
and this is also negative 600 k hat and the unit of this is newton so this is newton and this is now our answer for our cartesian vector for